villains? Uh, there will be new faces, uh, new heroes, new villains, uh, in addition to some of the uh, familiar cast coming back for you. Awesome. Any spoiler alerts? Not yet. You know, um, we're pretty early. We haven't even started shooting yet. We've uh, written the first couple of scripts. Uh, we have outlines up to the, the middle of the show, and then we sort of have, we know what those story arcs are to, to the end of the season. But, you know, we haven't cast a lot of the new people yet, and a lot of their, their fundamental characters are still, you know, being massaged and being worked on. So how involved are you with the show? Uh, I'm not involved day to day. Uh, Steve is the day-to-day -day showrunner. It's really his baby. He's the one that's you know, the guy on the spot. Uh, I supervise. I give notes and thoughts. I'll talk with the writers periodically. They might call and ask me questions or whatever. So I try to just, you know, I try to help without getting in the way. How do you go from having like a big show like Metal Star Galactica and then sort of dealing with the pressure or the hype that comes with a, a new project? Um... It's just what the job is, you know, that's what I, I like and I look forward to it. So it's stressful and it takes a lot of, you know, effort to do it, but I can't imagine doing anything else. So, you know, if you get one of these things going, you're just grateful to have it and grateful to get on the air and especially grateful to get a second season because so, so many shows either don't make, I mean, things are cut off at pitch, things are cut off at script, they're cut off at pilot, you know, and then they're cut off after a season. So to keep jumping through all those hoops successfully is an amazing, an amazing run. Uh, I think we agreed that uh, the darkly comedic tone of it was great and, and the music was something that set us apart from other people, particularly the way we opened you know, season one was very interesting and caught people's attention. Uh, the episode a day format was a nice structure for us. It kept the story contained and claustrophobic with a sense of a you know, ticking clock going on. It, it forced us to complete the show as opposed to just stretching the story beyond, uh, beyond the breaking point. Uh, we liked the, the characters and uh, liked a lot of uh, the way their backstories worked and feathering all that in and that people had secrets. We definitely liked all of that. There's always things you adjust, things you learn, you know, it's not, not every shock moment works, not every quirk wor works, and you sort of, you also, um, on an ongoing series, you know, the writers start to learn about their cast. You know, season one, you're learning along the way, but you never quite catch up. You're writing ahead, you're seeing dailies, you're like, oh, that, that's interesting, but it's not until you put the show together that you start to see really how the dynamics are playing. Oh, the chemistry between those two is interesting, or this didn't work. You know, oh, she's really good with humor, let's write more to that. So that by the time you get to the second season, now you've taken all that knowledge, and now you can really sort of apply it towards we know what we're doing in terms of who the players are, and we can really write to their strengths, and we can carve the show you know, specifically for them. Is there a certain amount of, I mean, you're saying that you kind of learn about people and the chemistry that will go along, but you also have certain things that you have to, to get to in the, in the story wise. So, how flexible are you thinking you're going to be going into the season, and how much more flexible do you have to be when you're actually writing? Uh, it's hard on a serialized show like this because you have to plan these things out and you have to kind of keep to the path because if you start pulling threads then things unravel backwards and forwards. If you're working on episode four and you have an idea, you really have to make sure that it, it lines up with where you're going and also what you've established. So you want a certain amount of flexibility because you want to sort of make discoveries along the way and, and you know, bring them into the show, but it's tricky because you really are in this intricate tapestry and you have to be careful, you know, which, which you change. Is it hard to work on this show and then have another show that you're trying to get up and running at the same time? It is. I mean, like I said, I, 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 you know, Steve's really the guy and the lion's share of my time is really spent on Outlander and I kind of go in and out and try to be helpful and provide sort of, you know, a, a, perspective from somebody who's not there every day and I can kind of look at it with somewhat fresh eyes and say, well, okay, this is what's occurring to me or how about, how about this idea? Because every writer's room, the outlander room included, always, you know, it's a bubble to an extent and it's a lot of pressure and, but you, and you're talking just to each other and periodically it is nice to hear you know, the voice from the outside. Is there anything particular in season two that you would like to see the story uh, go towards, grab towards? 
Uh, sure. And uh, I'm not sure what I can say about that. Because <laughs> we're trying to do that, yes. <laughs> Almost that. Almost that. <laughs> How are you enjoying your uh, Comic Con? It's good. It's hectic. You know, it's it's a bit of a grind, you know, on some level because it's just bang, bang, bang onto this and that. But these are good problems to have, as my agent is fond of saying. So I can only complain so much. Did you watch like a drama strain, movies like a drama strain? I did. Uh, we did, uh, particularly before the first season. That's not really my genre. It's not really my thing. Uh, on the first season, I, I, before the show was even made, I didn't even want to read the script because it wasn't my cup of tea. I was like, I don't want to do a Myra show. And they just kept pushing it on me. Sony just kept saying, no, you got to read it, you got to read it. And when I read it, I was taken with the characters, and I just liked the, the way it was kind of grounded and sort of it was all sort of based in some reality. And I liked, it was a page turner, and I just wanted to see what happened next. And I still, that's still what attracts me to the show. The, the, the medical mystery of it and the, 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 the more horrific elements of it are not so much about what I love. I love the character stuff, and I like embroidering the mythology, and I like coming up with the twists and turns that take the audience, audience off guard. And then the, you know, Steve and the other writers are the ones that really embrace the other aspects of the show, the more technological and the medical mystery of it, and the, the horrific elements that, you know, I, I, I'm not the guy that's going to pitch the rats eating <laughs> eating Doreen, but I love it. It was like, when I heard it, I was like, oh, that's, that's really dark and weird. Let's do, you know, that's great. You know?